Today, we're going to explore the powerful geospatial capabilities of BigQuery and learn how to visualize geospatial data directly in a Colab notebook. Geospatial data, or location data, is incredibly valuable for gaining insights. Whether you're tracking deliveries, analyzing customer behavior by location, or understanding environmental patterns. BigQuery allows you to store, analyze, and visualize this data using standard SQL functions and the special geography data type. While there are several ways to visualize BigQuery geospatial data, such as Looker Studio or the BigQuery GeoViz tool, today we're focusing on using a Colab notebook. Colab gives us the flexibility to combine BigQuery's power with popular Python data science and visualization libraries for an ad hoc or iterative analysis. In this video, you will learn how to query public datasets from BigQuery and create various map visualizations right in Colab. We'll be visualizing San Francisco-related data from three public datasets, Bike Share Station Info, Neighborhood Boundaries, and SFPD Incident Reports. These are great examples of point and polygon data and will allow us to demonstrate creating scatter plots, choropleths, and heat maps, as well as visualizing polygons. We'll be working within a Colab notebook called BigQuery Geospatial Visualization in Colab. A link to this template is provided in the video description so that you can follow along. Okay, let's get started with the setup. First, we need to authenticate our Colab environment with our Google Cloud project. This allows us to access and analyze data that resides in BigQuery. This cell uses google.colab.auth to handle authentication. You'll need to enter your GCP project ID. Running this might pop up an authorization window. Next, there's an optional step for Google Maps platform authentication. If you have a GMP API key and want to use Google Maps as the base map for your visualizations, you can store the key name as a Colab secret and enter the secret name here. Otherwise, the visualizations you create will use a default base map. You then need to make sure the BigQuery API and optionally the Maps JavaScript API are enabled for your Google Cloud project. These gcloud commands handle that. Next, you'll install the necessary Python packages and import the libraries you'll need for the analysis and visualization. You can read more about each of these libraries and how they're used in the written section at the beginning of the notebook. The final setup step defines a helper function called display PyDeck map. This function is a wrapper to create and display our PyDeck maps, handling the optional GMP API key configuration. Now let's use the helper function to start creating our visualizations, starting with a scatter plot of all bike share stations listed in the San Francisco public dataset. Scatter plots are particularly useful for visualizing the distribution of data, like the bike share stations, to discover spatial patterns while still being able to examine or interact with individual points. First, you'll bring the data itself into the notebook. The BigQuery magic command allows you to query BigQuery directly from a Colab notebook. This SQL queries the bike share station info table, selecting the station details and the station geom column, which contains the location data. The results are saved as a GeoPandas data frame with a specified name, GDF San Francisco Bike Stations. You can take a look at the geo data frame and see the station geom column is in fact of the geometry type. And then you can use head to see a sample row or a few rows of data and validate it. To render a scatter plot, PyDeck needs separate longitude and latitude columns, so you'll extract the x and y coordinates from the geometry objects in your geo data frame. Finally, you'll define the scatter plot layer for PyDeck. You tell it which data frame to use, which columns contain the longitude and latitude, set the radius and color of the points, and make the points pickable so you can potentially hover for info. You then define a view state and display the map using the display PyDeck map helper function you defined in the setup. And there we have it, a map showing all the bike share stations as individual points. BigQuery's geography type can store points like you saw in the last example, but also lines, polygons, or collections. Sometimes you're provided geospatial data without knowing in advance its expected types. In this case, visualizing the data can help you discover the shapes, enabling further analysis. Often, data is available in the GeoJSON format, so you can visualize it with a GeoJSON layer. Let's run through an example that visualizes the San Francisco neighborhood boundaries. You'll first query the boundaries table of the San Francisco neighborhood's public dataset to get the neighborhood names and their geometries into a geo data frame. If you peek at the data, you can see the geometry column contains polygon objects. Next, you create a geo JSON layer, passing your geo data frame directly. PyDeck handles the conversion of the shapely geometry objects to geo JSON automatically. 
You'll configure the line and fill colors, line width, and then display it. Now we see the outlines of all the neighborhoods in San Francisco. Let's take it a step further and visualize data aggregated by Polygon. We'll now create a choropleth map, which allows you to aggregate and visualize discrete intensities. In essence, you'll be adding a new dimension to each of your polygons by using color to indicate the density of bike stations within each neighborhood. In the last example, you use GeoJSON layer to visualize polygons. This layer type requires GeoJSON data. However, if your data isn't easily converted to GeoJSON, you can use the polygon layer, which accepts a simple array of coordinates. In this example, you'll redo the neighborhood polygon visualization using polygon layer as a learning exercise. First, you'll add a new column to your geodata frame containing the area of each neighborhood in square kilometers. Next, you'll perform a spatial join using GeoPanda's sJoin to count the number of bike stations that fall within each neighborhood. Then you'll calculate the density for each neighborhood in stations per square kilometer and join this back to your geodata frame. Finally, because the polygon layer requires an array of points, not a GeoJSON object, you'll create a new polygon column by extracting the exterior coordinates from each neighborhood's geometry. In a real-world project with this GeoJSON source data, you would simply use the GeoJSON layer. But as I said, we're using the polygon layer here specifically to demonstrate how to work with data formatted as an array of coordinates. To create the choropleth effect, you need to map the station density to a color. You'll use the Bronca library to create a linear color map from light blue to dark red, based on the minimum and maximum station densities. Then you'll create a fill color column by applying this color map to the stations per square kilometer for each neighborhood, adding some transparency. Now you can define the polygon layer. You'll point it to your prepared geodata frame, specify the polygon column for the shapes, and the fill color column for the fill. You'll also set line colors and then display the map. This map visually shows the density of bike stations across different neighborhoods using color intensity. Our final visualization is a heat map. Heat maps are excellent for showing the continuous density of point data, especially when there are many points and predefined boundaries aren't the main focus. In this example, we'll look at the San Francisco Police Department incident report data for 2015. For heat maps, it's often good practice to aggregate the data first rather than plotting every single point. You can use the H3 geospatial indexing system to group incidents into hexagonal cells. First, you'll query the SFPD incidents table for the year 2015, selecting the unique key and location geometry object, which is constructed using the WKT location string. Then, using the H3Pi library, you'll calculate the H3 cell index at a resolution of 9 for each incident's latitude and longitude. You'll group by the H3 cell index and count the number of incidents in each cell. You'll create a new geodata frame with these counts. For the heat map layer, you'll also need the center coordinates of each H3 cell, which you'll calculate using cell to lat long. You can view the first few rows of the resulting geodata frame. We have three columns, the identifier for the H3 cell, the lat long of where the cell is centered, and the total number of incidents that occurred within that cell's boundaries. The heat map layer expects data in a specific JSON-like format, that is, a list of dictionaries with latitude, longitude, and weight. To prepare the data, you'll create a helper function and apply it to your aggregated data frame to generate this heat map data list. Now you can define the heat map layer, providing your heat map data. You'll specify the position columns and the weight field, which is your num incidence count. You can adjust opacity, radius, and aggregation method. And here's the heat map showing the hotspots of SFPD incidents in 2015 across the city. The notebook concludes with links to further reading on PyDeck, GeoPandas, BigQuery Geospatial Analytics, and Google Earth Engine integration. It also reminds you to clean up resources like deleting the GCP project or any API keys created if they were just for this tutorial. So that's a walkthrough of how you can leverage BigQuery's geospatial capabilities to analyze data and visualize the results interactively within a Colab notebook using libraries like GeoPandas and PyDeck. With these tools, you can create scatter plots, coral plots, heat maps, and visualize polygons to explore your location data and generate insights. If you haven't already, try out the notebook for yourself following the link provided in the video description and learn more about geospatial analytics with BigQuery in our documentation. 
Thanks for watching.